Hi everyone. I'm surrounded by some amazing friends today. I'm pretty excited for the topic at hand. So, you know, in collectively speaking and in agreement, we decided to sit down and just have a very candid, but a very honest conversation um, about the issue of pornography and masturbation within the Christian community. Um, my name is Andrea and I'm gonna let everybody else just introduce themselves. My name is Emmanuel and it's good to be here. Hey, yeah, and my name is Tolu, and I'm also thankful to be here. Amen, amen, amen. And, you know, the topic of pornography has been really taboo, um, not just, not really has been, it is taboo, actually, and also, like, a silent conversation, you know, amongst, you know, people in the body of Christ. And I believe it's just because this topic is packed with, you know, once you mention pornography, you know, it's packed with so much shame, so much guilt, there's so many people who are struggling, right? Whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you've been 10, 20 years in the faith, you know, there are people who are struggling, rising and falling. You know, that lure to sexual gratification through pornography is actually extremely strong. Um, and people feel uncomfortable, you know, to talk about it. Um, and, and that's the reason why we decided to sit down and just have this open and candid conversation. Um, because we believe that, you know, this is one of the enemy's ways of really destroying people, destroying people's lives, um, this issue. And, you know, the truth is that when we expose something and bring it to the light of God's word, there is freedom, right? The Bible says that the truth shall set you free. You know, when people know the truth, they experience freedom. And that's why we wanted to talk about this, about porno pornography and masturbation, the issue um, and the vicious cycle that it is. And it's taken hold of so many people. Um, and, you know, Ephesians 5.13 says that all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. So that's what we're going to be doing today is just bringing God's word and his truth, you know, to grant permanent freedom that is available um, to those who are bound in this vicious cycle. And, you know, something that, you know, a lot of people will say is, oh, well, pornography is not a problem, you know, but the truth is that it is a problem. And um, it's a problem because you know, it's an enemy and anything that is an enemy is an issue, right? It doesn't align with the, the God-given reality that we live in Christ Jesus, you know? So that's something I just want to throw to the, to the floor, you know, why is it a problem? Because it's one thing to say that, you know, this is something that is very destructive, but it's another thing to really delve deep and explain, you know, why pornography is a problem. So I just wanted to open that up to the floor. Like, why is it a problem? I think I can come in here and um, the, the fundamental reason why it's a problem is because it reprograms the mind to go against God's original design. Um, when someone gets addicted to pornography, not just about the act, it's, it's about what happens to that person um, the person's soul, the person's mind, the person's emotions. It would change how you see yourself primarily. The program of um, pornography and masturbation as inspired by Satan is to make the world revolve around you, uh, around your appetites, around your pleasures, around the flesh, you know, the lust of the flesh, the, the, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes. It's actually to... to um, to sponsor the devil's agenda. Um, because one, once, a man, one, once a man starts engaging in pornography, engaging in masturbation, the man begins, for example, to see the opposite sex as an object to be used. Yeah. Um, God's original design looks outdated. Um, it's something to be forsaken. And it just reminds me of the story of Genesis. Yeah. Adam and Eve. Um, the, the first gift of sin, you know, was that spirit of fear. You know, it would take a reverence for God. You, you, don't, you yeah. don't actually reverence God, but then you have this spirit of fear. Um, it, would, it would make that person begin to, you know, misinterpret the character of God. There is this atmosphere of condemnation that comes with it. Um, the desire to not run to God, but to run from God the desire to project the image of sin to God. You know, so the, the person that sins is the wicked person here, is the lustful person here, but he projects that image to God. For example, Adam says, I'm naked. I was afraid, so I hid myself. 
you know, implying that there was something about God, you know, that was haunting them. You know, I, I think that's the goal of Satan to actually yeah. recondition how you see God ultimately and then cast the image of your heart, the wickedness of man's heart to, as the character of God. You know, so pornography first, masturbation, like every other addiction, like every other sin would reprogram your mind towards God's design, God's design for family, God's design for communion, God's design for intimacy. Um, it will program how you see yourself, how you treat other people. Um, it will just change everything. So yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a big problem. I 100% agree with you on that, brother, because, you know, especially what you said with, you know, reprogramming your mind, that's essentially just what it does. You know, it corrupts and taints a person's ability to view sex in purity because now the world sex is just casual right when god created sex but for the beauty you know in the context of a god covenant marriage um and and, and that's just what pornography does it it it, be, it makes something that god created uh very uh dirty um right and 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 just taints the mind it just taints the mind um and and just also feeds us with feeds people with a false and distorted belief too that you know gratifying your sexual desires outside of marriage is okay that's just what it does mm -hmm. like you feel like it's okay but you know the bible says ye are not your own your body is a temple of the living god be you know once we are in christ jesus your body does not belong to you mm -hmm. you know it does not belong to you it belongs to god and what pornography and masturbation does is very self-centered and that's why it's a problem it's self-centered and christ has called us to deny ourselves, you know, uh, engaging in that act is doing the total opposite. Um, no, like everything we've said just for that, just gave for that insight into different things. And indeed, yes, it's, it's obviously a problem in the Christian community, but we find ourselves asking this question because of um, the environment we find ourselves as try to like mm -hmm. normalize things, um, right. even biology normalize. classes so on um the medical um opinions have 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 assisted the kingdom of darkness by the kind of things they they deem normal um but in in terms of looking at why it's a problem one lens it, it is is kind of like i used to ask myself um like you know with all this push for something like maybe lgbtq and all that like, what do demons stand to gain from lesbianism? Like, I don't think they themselves involved in this. So, so what's the morale for pushing it? And mm -hmm. and one thought that came to mind was, um, one thought that came out that came to mind was God has obviously say like, you know, this LGBTQ for example. God has shown His posture on it. The enemy knows God hates it. Mm -hmm. The major impedance to the enemy's um, advancement in any environment, in any life is darkness. I mean, is light. He's darkness, mm -hmm. God is light. So if he can provoke God as much as possible to withdraw from an environment, he has leeway in that place. So demons themselves may not be, as it were, directly involved in the so-called pleasurable or abnormal scenario of, um, <clears throat> of, um, of lesbianism and gay and all that, which is something they've always been doing. It's always, even in time of Sodom and Gomorrah, it's always something they bring up. I guess God just really hates it. And that's why it is useful to them to provoke God. So mm. from that lens, it shows that the intent of the enemy pushing any dimension of sin, as we walk to discussing on pornography, is to create a door, an outlet, to make one's life not conducive for, for God to dwell so that he's irritated enough to walk away. And if, 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 if that is possible, you know, that was his, his analogy. He just never thought that the God who cast him out for rebelling would himself decide to come and die for humanity. That mm -hmm. love was never in his calculation. Um, so the reason something like pornography is, is a problem is it's not just a sin. 
-hmm. It's a sin. God does not like it, but it's a sin that has a high addictive potential. So it, it's like a guarantee to the kingdom of darkness where if we lock someone in this, we have a door into his life on a continual basis for, for an extent because it's supposed to be difficult to pull off were it, mm. were it not for the grace of God. So that's mm. one reason we could say it's a problem. It, 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 we as human beings are, 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 are carriers of life. Mm. And it, this, this, this serpent in Genesis was sentenced to say, dust shall ye eat. Meaning the only, he, he's not among the angels that, were, that still receive life from God, like Gabriel and Michael and so on. So the life he's feeding off is among men and is eating dust from men. So sin mm. and this kind of thing create a gateway, almost like imagine people like pieces of fruit or and then it plugs a pipe into you. Those those things like pornography is like a pipe draining mm. one's mm. life. And that's why someone just finds themselves weaker and just not able to, the weakness manifests in different ways, but that's why it's a problem. Um, it's giving the enemy an inroad to affect one's life in ways that may not be obvious yet. And sometimes mm. it's immediately apparent, but it's, 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 it's a big door into one's life. And um, amen. Hmm. Amen. I love that you said that actually, Tolu, um, you know, how it creates a gateway to just drain a person's life. It's kind of like a domino effect, you know, and th that being an issue, many things in a person's life can't fall into place. Like the way you view human beings, your prayer life, your conversations, your speech, your thoughts, like it just takes over completely and drains you. And before you know it, a person is not, there's no desire to even want to stay in the place of prayer. Things, you know, uh, the things of God become distant, you know, um, um, like in Isaiah where it says, uh, your iniquity has separated you from God. Like there's a separation that happens, you know, that's just what, and that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to be further away from God, like away from God's presence as, as best as possible. You know, and like you said, highly addictive. And that's why, that's why it's really an issue. And that just brings me to something else I really wanted us to talk about. And that's just the roots, right? Just roots. Um, I think it's important that we understand the roots of an issue. You know, when we understand the root cause of a problem, um, it is the first step to deliverance. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you own a home and you have weeds growing in your backyard, Right? You don't just mow over the weed if you want to get rid of it, right? Pornography is like a weed, very stubborn, right? Um, um, the, the addiction is very stubborn. Um, it's not like it, you don't just mow over it, but you have to pluck it from its root. You have to stop it from growing, right? So it, it's important that we understand that, you know, um, how it's important that we understand how this kind of addiction begins in a person's life. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, from my experience, on uh, seeing the beginning and addressing it in the place of prayer was very, very important. So I just want us to kind of talk about that, about, about the roots and why it's important for people to be able to, you know, just dig back to the point of like first exposure and address it in prayer. Um, so yeah, I wanted to open the floor and, you know, let's talk about the roots of this and, you know, how it really manifests in a person's life. Like there are different roots and you know, even for those who are getting older, watching this, you know, they need to understand that there are roots to these things, to how these things manifest in a person's life. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I could, I think I could go next. Um, yeah, just, you know, keeping it real. Um, yeah. The movies we watch, songs we listen to, books you read. Some books are quite disastrous. They are, they are almost worse than, um, they almost was that movie because the movie has the limitation of human beings trying to act it out. Some mm. books and some audio books have mastered the art of, they leave your imagination to cast the show, they, mm. but it's, it's quite terrible. Um, so if the gospel, which is supposed to be a piece of information, is the power of God unto salvation, or the words that I speak are supposed to be spirit, and life, or I like to say the spirit of life, then the same thing plays in the, in the converse, the kingdom of darkness. The words originated or sponsored from darkness are right. spirits of darkness. They beam and influence. So when a person is reading that book, 
or a person. That's why God have mercy on some of our friends who um, study some cryptic things. It's not their fault. It's just bound. Like, you know, you find yourself having to study psychology. It's not your... I remember a class <laughs> I, I went into, sat down for the first class. It's an elective. They just played a video. Same man came from ape. I just stood up. <laughs> I just on a road for that. But not every that's because I was an engineer. Not everybody yeah. has the luxury. Some people have to stay there and write it, put it yeah. the exam that man came from ape so that you can pass and move ahead in life. Um, but these things that look like information, media, oh, it's just, it's just in fact, sometimes we begin to that's the height of deceit where we think it's by maturity. No, I mean like I mean like I can I can handle it, it doesn't really move me. It's just it's just act, it's just you know, just cosmetics. But any information, any media sponsored by darkness has a spirit accompanying it, just as the words, the same way you interact with the word of God and the Holy Spirit walks holiness in you, the same way a person interacts with books, songs, movies. I remember a lady once telling me that, um, that just by listening to a particular song, I won't call the name of the, the musician, she just feels like just getting naked, which is very cryptic. You know, yeah. but it tells you the influence, the cause yeah. and effect. It, it is another kind of gospel, a good news of yeah. darkness, and it is power unto destruction, just like the gospel is power unto salvation. But yeah. that's one major thing. Be that's mindful true. of what you expose yourself to. Even if it does not sound like it has clear, like I remember there was a phase where it's like, oh, but this song does not really have bad OGs. Oh, I don't want to call her name. There's one lady. <laughs> She does not read, I own is esoteric, it's not really English, it's enchanted kind of song. I know those who know, know the like, I don't want to mention her name so people don't go looking for her, but it's just it feels like this relaxing music. It's just right, there's not too much of lyrics, there's just enchanted. Oh, darkness. So when things are troubling you, you will not know. Sorry, I don't know if I had a break there. But when things are coming in, you, one will not be able to trace it. You just open the door and then miscellaneous spirits just begin to right. move around. But um, that's yeah. a major thing. Be mindful of what you watch. Consecrate yourself. Guard your heart. And, uh, Guard your heart. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, if I just read James chapter one, just to add to what has been said, James chapter one, we would agree that... Um, there's no sin without temptation, right? Wow. Um, and James just summarizes everything we've said um, perfectly. It says from verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust oh. and enticed. Then when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. So if you want to stop death, what do you do? Um, you stop sin from, you know, um, reaching the height of perfection, right? You want to stop sin from reaching that height of perfection, what do you do? Uh, you stop lust from, you know, conceiving in the heart. You want to stop lust from conceiving in the heart, what do you do? you have to stop entice the enticement. You have to look for where the enticement is coming from mm. and cut it off. And if you want to get to the enticement, what do you do? You have to search the heart for desires, strong desires. Desire. That's what is called lost. Strong, very yeah. strong desires. And where, do, where, where, where do we get strong desires from? You know, it, it comes from what we, what we are exposed to, like what, you yeah. know, um, yeah. to look, what you're exposed yeah. to, what you see, what you hear. The, the people that surround you, actually. I've come to discover oh. by spirit, your temptation will look like the, the weakness of the people around you. I, mm. I don't know, but if you observe, if you're around people who are very greedy, it will get to a point where you would start to observe that you are, you're finding yourself in that same scenario. If you're around people who are angry, you may want to catch, you, you, I don't know if you've ever been there where you, you catch yourself flame, you know, just flaring up. And then you're saying the same thing that one of your close friends would say when they are angry. It just shows that power of influence. You know, oh. what we are what we continuously hear, what we are seeing um, would eventually, you know, become a strong kind of desire in our hearts. So I believe as we expose this to prayer, 
the Lord will begin to, you know, show us the, the places where, you know, we were enticed. The thing about enticement is it's always very available. You know, oh. it just makes, it just makes the, what you would use to gratify yourself readily available. And, the, you know, oh. it's not the devil that brings the, the desire first. It's the man that actually accepts the exposure and meditates on it, you know, thinks about it until it becomes that strong emotion in him. And then the devil begins to learn what you desire, maybe through the persons you're interacting with. When he finds it, he begins to give you option A, option B, option C, you know. So I believe as we pray, the Lord would uh, um, expose us to that, the roots, you know, where did that exposure come from? Wow. Uh, was it from a person, from a book, from a movie, from a, a song, you know, um, yeah. I, I believe this is this is yeah this is the root. Oh. Yes, yes, so true. Um, what everybody said, and you know, while everybody was talking, what was just coming to me, you know, when we're talking about desires, is you know, it it just goes to show more of the reason why David prayed that prayer in Psalms fifty one, right, creating me a clean heart, because indeed, out of the heart flows all the issues of life, right. Yeah. So you know, and, and, and that's where desires are birthed. So if, if our hearts are cleansed and we have a clean heart, you know, um, um, a clean heart does not, pornography and the addiction to, to want to do anything that opposes God or who we are in Christ Jesus, you know, is not there when our, uh, yes, temptation arises, like <laughs> that's just the truth, but just even the lure to it, you know, you know, because the truth is, yes, we can actually get to a point where temptation arises and we flee. And I mean, God wouldn't give us like an instruction through his, in his word that we're unable to measure up to, especially yeah. the fact that we bear the same, like that same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us, mm -hmm. right? So really and truly, you know, like saying that prayer, making that prayer daily is very, very important. Like God you know, expose desires in me that are not of you and create in me a clean heart, right? Um, so that so that God, everything that is in us, everything that is in us that just opposes, that just wages to want to do right, you know, God just uproots those things. Um, and, and just kind of leads me to something else that I wanted us to really talk about. And that was just the sin aspect. You know, we talked about pornography being a problem, but, you know, I want us to shed, especially a lot of biblical and scriptural light on the sin nature like it is part of the sin nature right um and and the truth is some people may say I've, I've heard people say things like well the word pornography is not in the bible you know and but the truth is it is actually maybe not you know indirectly like the the greek word of immorality is pornea right and that's where the word pornography comes from you know, and that's why when, you know, the Bible will say flee sexual immorality or um, the Rosa scripture talks about all appearance of evil, right? Um, it is, it is a sin. It is a sin. Um, and if we have been freed from the power of sin, right, then we must understand that this, you know, pornography and masturbation has no hold over us. But I really want us to talk about why it's a sin, why it's a sin, um, because our aim is to please God, right? The Bible says that we were created for his glory, for his good pleasure. So if sin has no dominion over us any longer, you know, why, why, like, we must understand if sin has no dominion over us any longer, there is, that's like, pornography is, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I'm trying to say that. If sin, if we, the Bible says, we know that the word of God says sin has no more dominion over me, right? Mm -hmm. We must be able to explain that this thing, pornography and masturbation is a sin. Therefore, it has no dominion over you, but we have to understand why. So I wanted us to talk about it. I wanted to just open up the floor as to, you know, the sin that it is. You. Um, I'll just make a quick comment on, um, on, the, on the last question seen being a, I mean, um, masturbation being a problem, mm. or oh, sorry, the roots and the question about the, the roots. roots. Yeah. Um, just before we go into the, the scene, uh, defining it as a scene, uh, what came to mind is like, you know, a, a car, 
it has um, or the electronics in a car. I don't know if my analogy is correct. Basically, I'm trying to say that there is the start up and then there is the ongoing. So many a times um, we we view it from the lens of the the initiating route, but then there is an ongoing route that sustains it. So after one has been exposed, or after one has made that first step in error, one of the things amongst others that keeps a person it it becomes a route in and of itself in is is hope the the person lacks hope there is no hope the person then be, believes that this is who i am i mean from the uh, different scenarios i've seen um this is who i am and you just accept it and the person doubts the ability to loop out of it that lack of hope that l- lack of faith to to be delivered from it becomes a root in and of itself that sustains the the operation, the the the, the, the cycle. So, a key, as we discuss this, um, a key element of deliverance is to break free from that lack of hope and believe, which I believe is what we begin to go into when you say sin has no dominion over me. Is to believe right. that there is power in right. the Lord to, to be free. If if one if the enemy succeeds in removing that faith, then that lack of faith is a root because the person would just loop mm-hmm. in it continually. Lucky. But I just thought okay. to mention that and as we advance into this next section. Amen. Why is it a sin? Um, the first thing we want to look into is not just the act, um, oh. the, the result, the destination, right? If mm-hmm. you want to know, um, you want to know about the, the root, the nature of the root, look at the fruit. Right. Um, what is the fruit of masturbation? What is the fruit of uh, pornography? Does it actually glorify God? Mm. Uh, what's the resultant effect of the person who engages that act? Um, what is the fruit that um, the person who engaging in that act finds themselves enslaved? They can mm. do without. Is God's desire um, that we be enslaved? to an addiction, that an addiction becomes our Lord. Mm-hmm. Certainly, it's, mm-hmm. so we can see that um, it's, it's, clearly, it's, it's, it's clearly not from God. And uh, I love what Andrea said earlier, talking about you know, sexual immorality, the word used. And that word was used as an umbrella term you know, to not just for fornication, but everything that everything. You know, can be characterized into um, circumstances where the thoughts, the emotions, the body are employed, you know, against God's design, against God's will. And we can also call, we can also see that um, from what we read earlier in James, that there's no sin without desire. Now, oh, what is that yeah. desire that leads to sin? Is it God, is it, is it the desire that God walks in you or the desire we, we got from the word or the fleshly desires? If we can see that it's not God that inspires the desire, you know, oh. to watch people who are not within the context of marriage um, have sex oh. and you know, with, with all manner of you know drugs and whatever if it's not god's desire that it be scripted um, oh. then what is my where did that desire come from that would oh. empower me to sit down and watch those people oh. where did it come from of course it's 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 it, we can call it the desire the lust of the flesh the lust of the god is lost of the flesh we can see that in galatians and uh, galatians chapter 5 we'll just read just a little mm-hmm. just a little bit of scriptures galatians chapter 5 uh, i think we'll just read uh, from verse 13 it says for brethren you have been called unto liberty mm-hmm. and somebody once said he said liberty or freedom is not the is not the ability to do whatever you want it's the power to do what is right. What is right. Mm-hmm. Um, right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So the, the love work, which, which would be, you know, God's love, the unselfishness of love, would be my, the arena for my freedom from whatever I do. Um, when I think about pornography, masturbation, all I think about is selfishness. And Selfish. that is out of Self itself out of the scope of God's love 
So mm -hmm. if it's out of the scope of God's love, then clearly it's not inspired by God. And it, it goes on mm -hmm. to say, it says, for all the law is fulfilled in one, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Then he says in 16, this I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So anytime I'm fulfilling the lust of the flesh, gratifying the desires that don't come from God, I am mm -hmm. not walking in the spirit, clearly. Mm -hmm. So um, any, any act, the act of pornography, the act of masturbation, it's clearly fulfilling the lust of the flesh, fulfilling a desire that did not originate from God, fulfilling an agenda that did not originate from God, fulfilling a design, a program that did not originate from God. It goes on to say, for the flesh lost it against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So that lust inspired by the flesh is actually malicious. It has a malicious intent to get at God, to mm -hmm. get at God's design. Like Brother Tolu said earlier, it's, it's mm -hmm. really to get at God. It's really to say God is saying A. We want to say B just to spank mm -hmm. God. It's the mm -hmm. flesh lost it against the spirit. It says, and these are contrary, the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. He says, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, he now mentions the, the works of the flesh. Yeah. He says, the works of the flesh are, mani are manifest, which are, which are these? He says, adultery. He says, fornication. Then he says, uncleanness, yeah. which actually covers what you think. It goes beyond what you do. It covers what you think. It covers the imagination. It covers everything about, everything moral, Everything morality. I remember uh, growing up as a teenager, um, one, of, one of my um, mentors in the faith told me, he said, Can, have you ever imagined anybody bring a man and a woman and say, in public, do what you guys do in secret? Mm. What would you, if they bring them, matter of fact, we'll pick up stones. We'll stone them, we'll chase them out. He says, if you react that way, in, if, the, if that should happen in public, you can't even think about it. You can't even imagine it. Mm. Why is it okay? Just because now it's on TV and on the phone, mm. that to be okay, you know? And it just made sense to me. That's, that desire to have that experience is an unclean one. It's mm. not from God. So I, I think this should explain why um, it's a sin because mm. it's, it misses the Mm. It misses the, it misses God's original design. It's a form of pleasure that is not derived from the fountains of the Spirit of God. The mm. Bible says God is at both to will and to do of His good pleasure. pleasure. There are other, but we we should fulfill the pleasures of God, the pleasures mm. of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.